I'm constantly blending the makeup in and around my smile lines. That's really all you need to know. How are you my internet family and welcome back for another Habits I Formed in My Twenties video. If you are enjoying and learning a lot from this series, this Irish internet grandmother would really appreciate a thumbs up to help me with the YouTube algorithm so that new people can continue to join this internet family. So, so far in the series we have had a skincare episode, a sexuality episode, a food episode. The last episode was dating and relationship habits which went down really well and they are all linked below in a playlist but today is a very much requested long awaited episode because uh, I originally started my YouTube channel mostly doing beauty and makeup videos. That was my jam, the jam to my peanut butter. And you know, I never stopped enjoying the jam. I just found that I I was bored making the same old content all the time because I'm very brand loyal. I'm not someone who collects makeup. You might remember back in the day, YouTube was full of these makeup collection videos where people were almost like, you know, look at how many millions of products that I have that I don't use every day. <laughs> and I don't understand why that became such a huge, huge, huge trend. But um, I think a lot of us, especially people my age, are finding themselves more into makeup minimalism. So like a lot of the products that I kind of own will fit into a bag like this. I obviously have more than just these products, but I do like to kind of shop smart. So there was that. And then also I wanted this channel to be about a lot more than just makeup, but I do feel that I've learned a lot of lessons over the years through trial and error that I wanna share in this video. 10 years ago, YouTube was just a place where people would like flock to share their own tips and tricks. And now the makeup part of YouTube is dominated by professional, incredible makeup artists with this perfect lighting. A lot of them use filters on their videos as well. A lot of the looks that they do, while incredibly beautiful and artistic, are not things that people would really use in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, so this video will be very much based on makeup techniques and things that I do on a very regular basis, like every week, every month, every day sometimes. Um, well, no, I don't wear makeup every day. But sometimes a week will go by where I'm wearing it every day. Other times I'll just go barefaced all week and you guys who watch my monthly vlogs know that. Um, right, so I'm gonna dive right into this and I'm starting off with eyes because the eyes are the window to the soul and I just feel like eyes are what it's all about that is the thing that most of us are drawn to when we look at someone's face and usually i will either go bold eyes and nude lip or just nothing on the lips like today i'm just wearing lip gloss or i will do a bold lip and very little on the eyes and then other days i'll kind of go with just a little bit on both the girl is starting off with eyes because i learned a lot of bad habits over my 20s that i had to undo and i had to learn the proper ways to do the makeup because I have hooded eyes like a lot of people and I remember I used to try and follow tutorials by people like Michelle Phan, the OG makeup queen and she is so nice. I've met her a few times. She's lovely um, but her tutorials for eye makeup didn't work for me because I have these hoods so it's hooded eye just essentially means that there's like a bit of skin that kind of hangs down and when you go to do eyeliner for example winged eyeliner the way that I would follow it from a tutorial of someone who doesn't have hooded eyes it just would look real nasty and crappy on my eyes the product would transfer it wasn't doing me any favors at all and then I learned how to do it correctly I do winged liner a lot more straight across I will kind of start you know out here and I will build it in so I'm not too much going over that crease and it's not then drawing attention to the hooded eyes it just widens my eyes makes them look a lot bigger um i also really love to do winged liner with um eyeshadows so you can make any colored winged liner using just eyeshadow and water and that is a habit that i've gotten into i'd say over the past two years and i usually do it with browns and deep purples and burgundies and stuff like that i'll just dampen an eyeshadow sometimes i use like my facial mist or whatever i'll use an angled brush and i'll just kind of yeah fill in the liner the same way i would if i was using an actual liquid liner other eye makeup techniques that all my hooded eye gals need to know is that you absolutely need to use a transition shade to use a blending brush and this one is from charlotte tilbury any kind of neutral transition color into the crease and up onto the crease so early in my youtube days i used to do my eye makeup just oh it was tragic i look back at videos now and it, it i wore my makeup like this at my 
university graduation. Look at the state of that. And I was putting that out there as an almost like follow along tutorial because I thought it looked cool, I suppose. Like there is no right and wrong way to do makeup. But now that I know that there's ways that just enhances my features better, obviously I'm gonna go with those things, you know? So yeah, transition shades and then also um, having less of an arched eyebrow, I've noticed and I've realized um, just suits me and suits hooded eyes a lot better. So I kind of stopped getting the arches waxed into my eyebrows. I actually now get them threaded by a local girl. So going to the same person over and over again who knows your brows, who knows what you're looking for is a really, really good habit to get into. Trying to do eye makeup when you don't have any kind of brow maintenance routine. Um, it just doesn't look as mwah, you know? So yeah, straighter brows. And then I even fill them in like straighter so you know my brows are so sparse I used to pluck them and like shave them I literally used to shave them when I was a teenager like I'd get a, sh a razor and I'd try and like shave them to be really really thin friends used to be a thing and they made skinny brows look like the sex so that was what I used to do and they've just never really fully grown back properly since then so yeah I always use benefits eyebrow products they're just foolproof and I love them I'll always 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 use something to fill them in and then I'll always use something to floof them so gimme brow by benefit kind of like makes them look more human <laughs> because when you when you put the makeup on it can like flatten them down and finally I've learned that certain types of lashes do not work with hooded eyes so like really full-on lashes that are almost the same thickness from here to here from that inner corner outwards they just it they give this heavy awful look it just doesn't doesn't do any favors so any lashes that have like less lash on the inside and then they get bigger and bigger as they go toward the outer corner those are the ones that I will use the next habit is that I use colors that suit my features mostly and I'm not saying that I never veer outside of this but one day I googled you know colors that go well with green eyes and that kind of thing and experts suggested earth tones dark greens and gold and wine and brown and I got experimenting you know I got inspired I looked up loads of pictures of celebs and people who's who have similar coloring to me similar eyes eye color and all that kind of thing um, and I played around and I did note that the colors that are supposed to look good with my eye color actually do look good with my eye colors do some research into your own color palette your own um features and your tastes and all that kind of stuff and build your makeup collection around those colors that's what i have done and it has served me well this next habit is something that i always always do and that is to put moisturizer on before applying foundation i never ever skip it it's not just for hydrating your face it literally gives your makeup something to stick onto so it lasts longer your makeup at Application is different if you don't wear it like the makeup will kind of cling to dry patches of skin and that kind of thing like I tend to get those in and around my nose area real bad and if I don't wear moisturizer it's way way worse also then so color matching right I remember in school we would all go into like you know the drugstore and we would put the products on the back of our hands and we you know if you're wearing tan or if you're not wearing tan you'd look at it and you'd be like oh yeah that that'll do and the amount of bottles of makeup that I bought over the years that have just lay down in the graveyard drawer, you know, and they never get touched. And I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you do. Don't bullshit me. Like the video if you've done this, if you've bought something and then not fucking used it. <laughs> Such a waste of money. Oh, I'm telling you, I could have paid for a holiday with the amount of money I have wasted on wrong coloured products <laughs> so um what i always do is i'll either put it along here on my jawline um right under here or ideally just go in with no makeup on and put it on my face and then test it over the day and see how it actually wears before committing to buying it you know um there's two products that i always use now um these two i'll go on to those in a sec but in my early 20s i had real bad acne so many videos about it i used to gravitate toward much heavier foundations because i kind of needed them you know i would use derma blend by vichy i would use double wear by estee lauder and i still love both of those foundations they got me through a lot of uh times where i was very self-conscious about my skin um but then in my later 20s i just decided to focus a lot more on trying to like really treat my skin and start there because face makeup looks so much better on 
healthy skin, dewy skin. Then I started going for stuff that wears a little bit lighter on the skin. Um, so my two most used products are these two. So this is a mineral based makeup. It's Jane Iredale's Glow Time Full Coverage Mineral BB Cream. And I definitely think using mineral makeup has made a difference to my skin. I can just say that hand on heart. But the thing with this is it's quite pricey. You know, I am 30 years old, I work hard, I don't mind spending a bit of moolah every couple of months to get a tube of this um, because it's so, so good. It's got an SPF, it's real nourishing on the skin and it just, it feels like, it's like skincare in a makeup product. Um, but then I also really like this. This is the Pixie by Petra Beauty Balm. And uh, it's high coverage, but it says it's high coverage and it you know it is it'll cover a lot of like hyperpigmentation and stuff but it, it's not it doesn't have that cakey mask effect on your skin it it wears really beautifully and naturally it's really milky creamy formula this is shade number one and this is shade number three and they both match me perfectly because i'm so fucking pale i do want to touch a little bit more on the whole minimalism thing and like brand loyalty uh like <laughs> I'm a big lover of Charlotte Tilbury, for example, and basically all of my lipsticks are Charlotte Tilbury because, you know, I found a brand that has beautiful colours, that wears well, that is long-lasting, that has good ingredients, that is widely, widely rated by makeup artists and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just going to stick with that brand. That's just the way I am. And there's certain brands that you'll see pop up time and time again in my videos, like Benefit, like Pixie, like Becca. And I've never been sponsored by any of these brands. I do get some people kind of sometimes being like, oh, this is just like a commercial. Like, firstly, so what? If someone does a sponsored video, it's basically just showing you something that's available and then you can decide if you want it or not like I have nothing against doing makeup spawns I've done them before um but what I mean is like I I don't kind of just jump on every single new bandwagon like when I find something that I like and that works for me I like it and I love it and I'll reuse it a lot I just like to not waste my money you know so for example in this makeup bag there are things that I have had for a couple of years like I have been using this palette from Charlotte Tilbury ever since I got it and it's still going strong. I have bought multiples of this Becca Moonstone highlight because it's so good. I've hit pan again. Bloody Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. I've gone through so many of these. One tip actually. Don't uh, don't pump your mascara like that. Well, I'm after doing it now. Fuck. It pushes bacteria in and um, so like kind of do a little swivel motion if you're trying to like get extra out. Anyway, um, Benny Tint by Benefit, like this is just great to pop onto the cheeks and the lips with a little bit of my base makeup and, you know, a little bit of floofy through the brows. I'm good to go if I want to look less dead while leaving the house without committing to a full face. Um, yeah, give me brow. Ever since I first, I did a video where I bought this and I trialed it like when it first came out years ago and I've just ever since just stuck to it. I know there's a million brow gels. But I like this one, so I'm gonna keep buying it. That's just that's just a habit that has saved me a lot of money. And it's saved me from a lot of disappointment as well because, you know, I see people and they'll buy something because they heard someone talking about it online and then they get it and they're like, oh, this is crap. So yeah, try things before you buy them and, you know, don't feel the pressure to constantly have new makeup. It's this, it's coming from all angles. You know, there's always a new thing and a new thing. And like the one thing I've been very tempted to get recently is the new, is the Shane Dawson palette. Like I know, but I just, it's so cool looking and it's more of like a collector, collector's item. It is beautiful and I know it. Would, I would wear it, but I, I haven't ordered it because I have palettes that are still full. Like why have 25 of these in a drawer when you can have like a couple, cause when it comes to contouring my face, I do like a kind of a th number three motion. So I kind of like go, I'll kind of make a fish face. Like I will find my cheekbone or I will create one if I'm having like a more chubby year. <laughs> but I'll, I'll do um it like just right in under the cheekbone. I'll like blend, 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 blend. Um, but I do it there and then, so, so I'll do it there, up around my forehead, back down there, and then back under here. And it just sculpts out my face a little bit. And I will usually use a little bit of contour, like just down my nose, down here, but like nothing mad. It's not even really to change the shape around like that. It just gives that kind of sharper look if I'm wearing contour. A lot of the time I won't wear any contour and I'll just use highlighter. I mentioned Becca highlight there, which I use on my face. Like sometimes I'll use that on my eyes as well, but like more often than not, I'll use a, 
one that's specific for the eyes but to make my eyes look bigger um I apply you know the highlight on the tear duct and then like just under the brow bone as well and I will also very regularly use where's it gone one of these little uh pencils that are like skin color kind of or like just light really really pale pencils for the waterline on the bottom I just feel like it opens up my eyes so much and the difference it makes if I'm like feeling tired or my eyes are kind of red and um, that kind of can happen if I have lactose or if I you know if I'm having a bit of a hormonal cry and uh, this is my friend this is my friend his name is Ben Ben Timothy I don't even have to say it but always remove makeup before bed end of story <laughs> I'll usually use micellar water to kind of take it off and then I'll do a double cleanse always 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 with some kind of cream cleanser or a balmy cleanser like the Emma Hardy cleansing balm just an anything that is um, nice and nourishing and moisturizing um, on the skin you won't catch me dead going to bed in my makeup unless I've just had a blazing row with someone which thankfully thanks to therapy is happening a lot less lately also bitches clean your makeup brushes I can't believe how many of you don't do this. I talked about it on stories on Instagram recently and so many people replied being like, oh my God, I haven't done that ever or you can wash them. I usually would clean my brushes. I'd say once every two weeks or once every month and I have a tutorial on how I clean them. It's from years ago, but it's still what I do. I'll link that in the description box. Um, it's really, really simple, very cheap. Anybody can do it um, because otherwise, you know, you're constantly putting all bacteria and just gross icky crap on back onto your face so like I also would clean my sponge in the same way like makeup sponge I would clean that in the same way I'd clean my brushes although I don't always use a makeup sponge like sometimes I'll just use my fingers like my my clean fingers on the topic of brushes don't fucking blow on your brushes you're just blowing a load of bacteria all over them. another one powder like powder on on your face I don't really ever wear powder ever anymore. Like I might set, you know, under here a little bit or maybe a little bit here, a tiny little bit in here. Um, but like minuscule amounts only if I am going to be wanting to wear my makeup for like hours and hours and hours. I feel like setting sprays look so much better um, in person, you know. I used to lay on the powder so, so, so thick and I, I just don't use it anymore. Um... Like I said, very rarely. Any setting sprays, I am all about them. You know, Urban Decay have great ones. Any kind of rose water. And I will use them very liberally multiple times a day sometimes. Um, but they just make makeup look so much more natural and gorgeous. And just, mm. So yeah, they'd be the main makeup habits that I formed in my 20s. If there are any that you would like to share, write them in a comment and please leave your requests for future episodes of this series in a comment because I really enjoy making these videos and putting them together. I do have others planned like exercise, self-care, bad habits, you know, I've got a little list there but it's continually growing thanks to your requests. Um, but yeah, again, if you enjoyed this, thumbs it up they help my channel so much and uh, yeah i'll see you again in another video very very soon